Hi. I grew up in a town called Calabasas, California, just 20 minutes north of the heart of Los Angeles. This is the same town that can lay claim to the Kardashians, Britney Spears, and Chris Lilly's character, S. Mouse, from the latest Angry Boys. The houses are big, often behind gated communities, and Mexican immigrants often clean them while the residents head out to pursue the American dream. Where I grew up, happiness was defined by a specific set of circumstances, and if you weren't born with them, there was a way to fix that. There was always a cure to a lack of happiness. If you were unhappy because of the house you owned, you could always bar borrow more money from the bank and get a bigger one. If you were unhappy because of your body, you could always starve yourself to make yourself thinner. If you were unhappy because of the size of your boobs, you, the plastic surgeon was always open and right around the corner. And if you still couldn't figure it out, there were plenty of pills for that kind of thing. I hated growing up there. The moment I was old enough to leave, I did, and in the decades since, I've spent a lot of time thinking about happiness. How it actually comes from within, and how, try as you might, there is no cure to get there. And I think that a lot of society's problems stem from the fact that we keep trying to find one. Modern me medicine is marvelous. It has been able to cure all sorts of physical ailments. But in the field of mental health, we've got a long way to go. Which begs the question, is there a cure for our emotions? But more importantly, does there need to be? I can pinpoint my depression starting in early childhood. I told you where I grew up. And for years, I tried to find a cure for the pain. The pain was not good enough. I was in a deadline for the pursuit of happiness, and I kept failing to reach it. When I had a mental breakdown a couple years ago, I began to realize that I was searching for a cure that didn't exist. Sometimes life just sucked, and that's OK. In our society, normal is defined by happiness, but that is not our only emotion, and yet we're taught to crave that. Media and advertising have effectively labeled happiness as good and sadness as bad. And when we look at what's supposed to make us happy, and we realize we are not living up to that Hollywood standard, we become depressed. Life isn't supposed to be like this. Our carved expectations become defeated under the weight of reality. How many of us have felt like there must be something wrong with us because we're not living up to the standard? How many of us are trying to fix ourselves, trying to cure ourselves of our humanness? And since that cure doesn't exist, we drown ourselves in addictions and abuses and shopping and plastic surgery. But we never find a cure, and the inherent pain is still there. There is no escaping it. <clears throat> we have no choice but to start looking at pain a little differently. We need to start being honest with ourselves, to start understanding that pain is a part of life, and no amount of plastic is going to end that. We need to start telling our kids that perfection isn't real, or even desirable, so that they stop killing themselves, literally, because they cannot attain it. We need to start talking about not just mental health, but about pain in general, grief and longing and heartbreak. Let's start walking with our pain, dancing with it, and playing its sad love songs. Let's start to honor it and tolerate it and realize that there is no cure for it, that there doesn't need to be. Life is beautiful and life is painful, and pain is a part of that beauty. And the best part is that time really does heal everything. It doesn't cure pain, but it sure as hell does heal it. My name is Seema, and I'm the founder of This Place Is Yours, a not-for-profit media project to enhance mental health, social inclusion, and social change. The heart of the project is a space for everyone to share their stories of pain, longing, love, and everything else that's in the human experience. Everything that media and advertising tends to airbrush over and ignore, and everything that we don't want to talk about. This is a space where people are allowed to feel their pain, where they can understand they are not alone, and where they can open up our dialogue and connect to one another, and thereby find the kind of happiness that truly exists. Thank you.